Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast. Each week, your host, Casey Haston, Director of Recruiting at VIP, will bring you valuable insights from thought leaders, introduce you to incredible companies, and bring you tips for landing your dream job from our team of executive recruiters at VIP. And now, Casey Haston. Welcome to the We Are VIP podcast, a podcast devoted to adding value to your career or candidate search, brought to you by VIP. I'm your host, Casey Haston. I'm an executive recruiter, director of recruiting, and also an executive leadership coach. And I like to describe myself, as you've all heard, as your all-around hiring guru. So the point of this podcast, of course, is to bring you thought leaders and people that we believe are going to help you, you know, either in your job search or just if you're trying to up your company culture. And I have got a real treat for you guys today. So let me introduce our guest. We have Rose Jubb, image strategist, best-selling author, and owner of Style Class. So Rose developed an entire platform that helps women dial in their personal brand. Sorry, I got a little confused there. Dial in their personal brand for business from the comfort of their homes. Her number one best-selling books, podcasts, courses, in-person and virtual sessions are now complemented by her new makeover show. We're going to talk about this. Her pilot, Closet Goals, that recently launched on Amazon Prime Video. Her mission is to spread as much self-love and style buzz to women with big goals as possible. Rose, I am so excited that you're here today. I'm really honored to be a guest. That is so amazing. So I always like to start our show talking about how we got connected because I I really want to encourage people to follow those connections, right? So do you remember how we got connected? Miss Suzanne Castle. She is so fabulous. And she's going to be so upset that you got on the show before her. I did email her and say, oh, thank you. I'm going, like, it's this week. She goes, oh, why not until this week? <laughs> <laughs> I think I tried to get her on earlier because we added some extra sessions and um, just because of the holidays and everything, and it just wasn't working with her schedule until later. So, yeah. but she's amazing. She's just a ball of sparkle, and her story is, like, amazing. It's just, she's one of the coolest people I know. <laughs> She abs and her title. I mean, how could you not want to be around her, Chief Sparkler? Yeah. I mean, (laughs) just she and she is just like a ball of sparkle and joy, and she'll just like pop into your email box with just love when you. It's amazing how she knows when you need it. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we're here to talk about you today. So, and I love our topic for today because I think it's so important. And with you being a stylist, I know you're going to give our audience some great tips. Um, Probably me too. I need some. Um, But So let's just kind of dive into this. You know, your website mentions that you have three seconds or less to leave a first impression that counts. So in the world of interviewing, how can your attire help you make that good first impression? You know, it does a lot for you. So you have, when you walk in that that three seconds, and it, and it does vary depending on the study and depending on if it's in person or virtual. The thing is a lot of things are virtual now and a lot of um, our interactions are virtual. When you meet someone online, you have a lot less, um, a lot less interaction with your your brain so you're not you're not smelling their cologne you're not feeling the strength of their handshake you're not a lot isn't happening so you're making a lot of those instant judgments that our brain tells us to make because it's hardwired for shortcuts right so one of those shortcuts is making like very fast judgments for safety sake you know our little caveman brains still rattling around in there and um, when it's online you don't have as much to go on except for your visual currency that first three seconds you can't just blurt out your resume you're gonna look I mean you could but it's not gonna come over (laughs) well (laughs) so you really need to like take advantage of the visual currency try to um, to to put forth 
you know, a little bit of your personality, but also enough polish so they know you are an expert in your field, you are responsible, and you can do that visually with a few tricks. So give us an example of a trick. Structure, hard edges, hard lines, um, oh. often, and it doesn't have to be something uncomfortable, like this vest um, is, like a very soft wool. It's very cozy, it's very comfy, but it is structured and cut in a way that gives me some hard lines over this kind of wacky print, right? So this structure is enough to kind of just like, just get across that, you know, I I am who I say I am. It's, it's just this subconscious little check of a box in the other person's mind. It could be in a blazer, it could be in a, a sweater jacket, it could be in so many different things that just give a little structure, it adds just enough polish. And those are all things that you can actually um, just like have hanging on the back of your, your chair. It's not like you have to wear it all day, every day, but you can just pop it on for a Zoom call very, very easily. I, I think that's what you did right before we started recording, didn't you? You had it handy. <laughs> you, I love that you follow your own advice, though, that it was right there, you know, and you're like, just put this on because we're about to have a call. And so, and that brings up a really good point because you mentioned like in person. Would you recommend the same structure for in person as virtual? I do. I do. But you do have to, um, there's a lot more to take into account when you're in person because they may be greeting you at the door when you're walking in wearing your outerwear or they you may just be running into a an admin person but they could be speaking to the person that's interviewing you too so you need to think about everything when you like get to that building if they're going to see you in your outerwear you need to make sure that that it is polished as well it can't just be the random bright pink ski jacket that you have in the closet because it's chilly out. Well, it's cold where I am, not where you are. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get cold here very often. Yeah. Well, <laughs> in case anybody's listening yeah. in, in a temperate region, um, you, you got to think about the outerwear. You have to think about the shoes. You got to think about the cologne and probably not wearing it. Uh, at this point, we don't usually do that in interviews anymore. But there's a lot more than your visual currency you have to think about because you are going to be there in person interacting with them in a deeper way. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how, okay, so let's talk about impressions on virtual meetings. So when you're in person, you talk about the outerwear, really considering all that. And now we're on a Zoom. And so first impressions are so important even in, especially because I mean, I can't tell you the number of clients that I have that are interviewing virtually and then hiring virtually and onboarding through virtual training and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's like we live in a Zoom channel now, right? Yeah. And so first impressions, and you mentioned the structure, but what's something else that they might do? And then I'm going to tell you a funny story. Okay. <laughs> I have a feeling I know what it's about. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I'm just... Um, you have to think about your background. You definitely have to think about the background. If there's piles of laundry or, I mean, who doesn't have a pile of laundry now and then? Um, I have a child, so it's almost always. <laughs> Somewhere in my house, there's a pile of laundry. My camera's not focused on that. Um, I'm going to get to a clean background. Um, if you are on social media a lot for a small business or something around your personal brand, it can be something that's very branded like mine is, or it can just be a blank wall. It's not a big deal. It doesn't have to be a styled bookcase or anything like that. You just want to be the focus of the call and not have something distracting behind you. Um, also, keep in mind that we there have been horror stories about people not realizing when their camera is on and initiating. And they, I mean, don't be yelling at a kid across the room or like, just know that when you are clicking enter, it could be on faster than you expect. So just, you know, be ready to be on camera when you click go. <laughs> Absolutely. That's great advice for sure. And you know, and another thing that my funny story here is that I was, so we screen our candidates before we ever present them to our clients, right? And so one time I was interviewing a candidate and 
he, he had to get up to go get a kid or something like that. Suit stood up and he had on like shorts. And I was like, hmm. So you never know when you're going to get called away yeah. and have to stand up during a Zoom. So go ahead and put on the full suit for an interview. Just do the whole thing. And also, there have been a lot of studies about we, there are cognitive shifts. Because, you know, I'm, I'm the stylist with a background in marketing and psychology. I cannot help but, like, nerd <laughs> out about studies. So there have been lots of studies about how when we put on different things, we start to get in a different mindset and we shift and our, our confidence shifts. There have been studies about um, two groups of people coming into a room and they hand them both white coats and have them take a test. One of them is told that it's a janitorial uniform and one of them is told that they got him um, from the, the medical students down the street, lent them the coats. And who did better? The group that thought they were wearing medical student coats and it's the same coat. They did much better because wow. they put on something that they felt, you know, this is, you know, this is important. I am doing the thing. It is like they felt it embodied more intelligence or a higher score and it happened. So it is important. I work with a lot of speakers and authors, consultants, that kind of thing. And I say get dressed head to toe. If you're about to speak at an online conference, even at home, dress like you are on that stage in person because you will act as if you're online, mm -hmm. if you're on that stage and you will get more interaction and the, the audience will start to act as if they're there too. It just kind of creates more of this feeling like we're all in it. Um, than, than just, you know, everybody wearing sweatpants on the, dressed up from the desk up, works on some occasions, but it's a little risky. <laughs> it's a little risky. You know, and it's so funny because, um, how do you feel about not wearing shoes though during the interview? I think it depends on the person. <laughs> I mean, when I'm doing a speaking event, <laughs> I'm not wearing them right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I am wearing a nice skirt and some fun tights. So, I mean, I, I, it's up to the person, but when I'm speaking, I do wear them, which is funny because I do feel like I stand differently. Yeah. I hold myself differently. Um, I think it might be different for fellas that don't tend to wear heels, but I feel a little power when I wear them. So I, you know, I tend to agree with you because, you know, I mean, really when I do this podcast and it's a video and audio, you, you see me from, uh, you know, shoulders up usually, but I'm dressed, for, like you said, from head to toe, and it just makes me feel better, you know? Yeah. It Even though I hate wearing heels now, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I have them on, and it does. It makes me feel a little bit more grown up. It's funny. Sometimes I'll walk in here with my flip-flops on, and I'm like, i got to go get my big girl shoes, you know? Right. So. And the people around you, I mean, I, I talk a lot, and I talked a lot before all this happened, and we, we had to go online we are kind of putting out the vibe and we're, we're telling the world how to treat us and how much we respect ourselves, that will be mirrored right back to us. And you will even find it in your own home with your coworkers, like your children and your partners. If my husband walks in and sees me fully dressed, he goes, oh, are you on an interview? I'll, I'll go take care of this. And they know, like, it is work time mom's working like <laughs> they know not to mess so it is it is important just to kind of keep your own productivity up and there's tons of studies showing that too like yeah. when you are wearing your work clothes you feel more productive yeah I think when we first went shelter in place I for a little bit I was like this is great I don't have to get dressed I don't have to wear heels and then okay so I did not give up my tennis shoes, but I did start getting dressed as if I was going to work because I was still doing all the Zooms. And it just made, you're right, it made me feel better. So, and one other question I have for you, I'd love to get your opinion on this. We've talked about it on several other podcasts. Virtual backgrounds, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, I have never seen, I haven't seen many people mail it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, it's just too... I think it's too distracting when it doesn't quite go right and there there are I don't know. I don't want to I don't want to mess if, if if anybody's like very into them and you're very good at them and you have a green screen, great. But I I find it very very distracting when somebody tries to do a virtual background and it's not quite right. Yep. Our our human eyes are just we are so trained to kind of be looking for or if something's safe or right or 
or not quite right and we can see it and it's distracting so very i think i think a blank background is just fine in a pinch uh and you you don't have to do the the fake background yeah i i totally agree now i think that it can be done right if you have the green screen that makes yes. all the difference in the Equipment world makes all the all the difference but most of your candidates that are interviewing for jobs are not going to have a green screen so i say nix the virtual backgrounds Good. Okay. All right. So this is a really important question coming up. What about accessories? You know, oh. what accessories are appropriate to wear or bring to an interview? Ooh, that's a very good question. And it's a difficult question because I think accessories are a very fun, easy, affordable way to look and stay on trend. Because if you have a lot of a class kind of wardrobe and then you just sprinkle in some trendy accessories mm -hmm. you look like you're on trend and when you look like you're on trend people tend to subconsciously think that you are on trend in your industry as well mm. um, yeah there's this little thing that happens so I think it's great it can't be distracting though and it really really depends on your industry. If you are in a very creative artistic industry like myself I can get away with like the funky patterns and the funky background and and all that fun like big statement earrings um i can get away with that but if you are in more of an accounting field or if you are in law or science or something that is a little bit more serious it may be distracting or it may be just this little subconscious red flag for somebody going uh i don't know it, it's a fine balance and that's it's where you kind of have to to really get in touch with your own style and your own personality and kind of take the whole picture into account that's why it's a challenging question so i think one thing like that i think so when i'm in studio i have no jewelry like watches or anything like that that's going to clank on the table and so i think that like if you're in an in-person interview that's not as big a deal because you're sitting across the table and you don't have a table in front of you usually but when you're on a zoom you have a table in front of you and i think yeah. those noises can be distracting totally yes i am a big big proponent if you're going to do accessories i've i've been personal shopping for a lot of my private clients lately with a lot of statement earrings that kind of fit their specific personalities um, so that they can still wear something but it isn't going to get in the way it's not going to clank or anything because you're right I don't I don't wear rings or bracelets often around here because it, it would just get in the way absolutely so what is the biggest clothing mistake you see pe business people making in the workplace Ooh. There, uh, there used to be a lot of matchy matchy suits, and um, something that's very on trend right now is matchy matchy suits. If it's a very um, bright color, there's like an all lilac suit thing. There's, you know, just unexpected colors in suits, and that depends on your industry too, if that's appropriate. But um, nowadays, it, it's not as it's not as formal. And you don't have to do the coat that matches the pants or the coat or the, the blazer that matches the skirt. Um, that can tend to look quite dated now. So just mixing it up a little bit, getting pieces that kind of mix and match together is a lot better way to go. It'll keep you looking a little more fresh and on trend, which again will make you look to everybody else without them even knowing it. They'll think they're up to date in their industry. That makes so much sense. And I just realized, I think I'm going to have to have you come to my closet. <laughs> oh, I, did. I have a lot of matchy matchy, but I have no sense of style. So I have to, I, it's well, people. I'll visit you and Suzanne on the same trip. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Yeah. Everybody laughs at me. They're like, you know, how did you pick out that outfit? And I was like, it's on the mannequin, you know, at the store. <laughs> That's how I shop. Boxes. <laughs> yep, that's how I shop. So speaking of shopping, you know, one concern that a lot of uh, professionals have, especially women, um, have is that it's too expensive to purchase new business clothes frequently. And so what advice can you share with those people to keep their wardrobe fresh without breaking the bank? Great question. Um, having a lot of classic pieces that kind of just 
go with almost everything. A lot of great neutrals. So there's color pops like your pinks and your purples and your greens and that kind of thing. But then there's neutrals like cream, mm -hmm. white, black, gray, depending on your undertones, different neutrals are gonna look great on you. So having a lot of quality neutrals in your wardrobe will actually help you save in the long run because you're only going to have to sprinkle in the color pops and the trendy things once in a while, maybe once a season, maybe twice a year you go shopping and get a few pieces to kind of sprinkle over the top of that classic quality neutral wardrobe. And then it doesn't cost as much to do and you still look on trend and um, put together without spending as much. There's also lots of great ways to save as far as consignment places, even thrift places. Like you just, there, there is so much clothing in the world with the tags on sitting in those shops. And if you Google it right now, I know that there is a thrift place or a consignment place with your sizes just hanging there waiting for you um, in pieces that are wonderful and brand new. Uh, so there's lots of stuff out there. It's just finding it. And there's places online like ThreadUp that you can um, definitely find used clothing at that, that have a, a typically high standard for reselling. So That was called ThreadUp? Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> I've also thought there's another one that you can, another website, and you may know what it is, that you, it's not Rent the Runway because that's more formal, but there's another one that's more business clothes and that you can just trade it out like a once a, every month or something. I'm not sure about that one specifically, but Rent the Runway now does does business and, and blazers uh, and, and more ready to wear stuff. So, well, then maybe that's what it was that I heard about. Yeah, and and there's places like The Real Real is great for more luxury goods. Gotcha. That's a great place too. Um, but yeah, again, if you Google it, I, I mean, within a two mile radius, you probably have a place that is a small business near you that you can support, uh, especially right now. And um, they they have great clothing just waiting for you. It's it's amazing how much clothing is is just kind of consumed and not used by interesting. Uh, Americans, so. You know, and it's so interesting that you just said that because as I was coming to work today, and this is like a synchronicity, right? Because I don't believe in coincidences. Um, I was coming to work and I noticed a shop that I've never noticed before. And it looked like it was a consignment shop, but it was like, it looked like it was one of those like by appointment only. So probably a more high-end consignment shop. And it's been there forever. I mean, it's not like they just moved in grand opening. It's, yeah. you know, so I think I'm going to check it out. Yeah, I bet right now you probably wouldn't need an appointment. <laughs> you may not need an appointment. It's it's pretty tricky for retail right now. And, yeah. Um, give them a call ahead, but I'm sure they would be thrilled to see you. And I, some of the best items in my closet that are, again, those wonderful, high quality neutrals that mm -hmm. I will have forever, like a Hugo, a Hugo Boss, just blazer. It's navy. It's beautiful. I wore it on the show. It's when you when you see the difference in really really high quality clothing versus the the cheaper fast fashion items you will start to really understand why people purchase yes. it and hold on to it for a very long time because it is such high quality i agree 100 percent, and i love hugo boss suits i think they're great so yeah and they fit so well like with little tailoring it's amazing so yeah, there's there's another brand that I discovered recently, but I can't think of what it is. So I'm not going to say it. But it was like it was like wearing pajamas. That's the thing. Everybody thinks you know suiting and and things because we've we've run into so much cheaply made suiting that that suits and blazers and stuff have to be stuffy and you can't move your arms like this. You most definitely can in a, a higher quality piece. And now they make them. Out of, in every kind of fabric yes. under the sun. You can get a suit made out of linen. You can get a suit made out of rayon. You can get a suit. It's just all the things. So uh, there's something for everybody's style type. Absolutely. So, all right. So let's talk about those busy moms. You're a busy mom. 
And so you may not necessarily have just a lot of time or the luxury of a long morning routine to get ready and get put together top to top, top to bottom and find themselves rushing out the door. So what advice can you share to help people in these situations find some time to style themselves so they can set themselves up for success for the day? I think it starts with your mindset about it. If you're thinking, oh, this is just a box I, and I have to do it and it's a chore, it will most definitely become a chore. But if you start to think about it as I feel better, it's it's like any really like real self-care thing when you're in when you're about to do it and when you're in the middle of doing it, sometimes you don't want to. But as soon as it's done and for the rest of the day, you feel great. Working out, drinking all the water in the world, <laughs> like, all those things where it's not glamorous per se. Um, to do it, but then as soon as it's done, you feel great. It's just like that with the self-care of getting dressed, and that applies to everyone. When you get dressed, you will feel better for, throughout the day, and my goal is to help clients and anybody who runs across my content um, really see that they only have to do it once, and it's done for the day. I don't want you thinking about your, your clothing all day. If you're doing that, you're probably wearing the wrong thing, and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I want you to get dressed once. I want you to feel amazing. I want you to feel like you. And then for the rest of the day, you're just walking around with your head up and your shoulders back, seeing all the opportunities around you. It's so funny. I automatically just kind of put my shoulders back just a little bit and my head up when you said that. I'm like, auto suggestion. Um, you know, something else that a friend of mine told me about, about, I don't know, some time ago, but she had a wardrobe butler. Have you heard of this? Hmm, maybe, maybe it's called something different. Maybe, that's what she called it. But basically it was this little style section, but it came together and you would, there was a place for you to put all your jewelry for the next day. There was a place for you to hang your clothes that you were going to wear, all your pieces for the next day and just everything right there. So it just kind of took all the guesswork out of it. Totally. That's a great, great point. The next step after mindset is just having a cleaned out closet. Because if you have a lot of things hanging in your closet that don't fit, you dislike, you don't want to wear them, it is going to be a lot harder. If you feel like steam is coming out of your ears when you're getting dressed every day, it's because there's probably too much in your closet and a lot that doesn't fit. And in our brains, when we're looking at some, at that closet, it, there it's automatically going, that's out of season. It's too cold wear that it's too hot to wear that that has a broken button that one doesn't fit anymore that one doesn't fit anymore those jeans haven't fit in 10 years and it's sitting there mocking you from the bar <laughs> and you're just taking it <laughs> you're just letting that. it sit there and cleaning all that stuff out and really having in front of you what works that working wardrobe it's not just for work it's actually what works on you mm -hmm. having that available is a great first step um but laying things out every night if you can train yourself to do that it is a game changer and that's exactly what i do i lay everything out in one spot i don't have a wardrobe butler but i do have a yes. area in the middle that i just lay everything socks underwear bra just a whole outfit and jewelry right there and you can get dressed in less than three minutes without thinking about it you just put it on all you have to know is that it's weather appropriate and then it's activity appropriate. If, if there's any shifts in the weather or the activity, you might have to change. But other than that, you should be good to go. I love it. I, I, and you know what? When you were talking about the don't fit, don't like it, you just described every piece of clothing in my closet. No! <laughs> is it frustrating getting dressed? Up? Oh, I hate it. I hate oh. I've I've almost decided that I'm going to go Steve Jobs and just wear the same thing every day. I'm this close, this close. I know. We all feel that sometimes. It's like, wouldn't it be nice to have a uniform? But there is so much self-expression that can kind of like, once you get past that self-care part too, you do, you, you're a canvas every day. RuPaul always says you're born naked and then the rest is drag. It's like every day we get to put on this identity. If I did my hair different, did my makeup different, wore different clothes, I could look like a completely different person. And it is kind of, there's some fun in that too, that you, you would lose if you, you were a uniform kind of gal. <laughs> I probably won't do that, but I it has know. crossed my mind. So <laughs> tell me a little bit about your Amazon Prime show, Closet Goals. I'm dying to know. 
Oh, well, it's a it's a three episode pilot. Uh, as soon as we got those done, we started, you know, shopping that around to different, um, you know, different studios and things. COVID has uh, definitely slowed down this process, mm. but that's okay because we've had so much great feedback from people that are enjoying watching it. They're watching it with their kiddos. They're watching it and getting inspired to actually get dressed every day. Um, and it is, I, I did focus a lot on sustainable retailers and um, thrift and consignment and, and using those resources so we don't have to use extra resources. Better for the planet, better for the people that make the materials, better for the people that make the clothes. Uh, so oh, we did a, a big focus on that and a focus on people that had really big goals that wanted to get there because I really truly think that you can use your wardrobe to propel you forward. Uh, I, I have a joke that, you know, I can tell your future by your closet. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and you get to shift it. If you want to change your future, change your wardrobe. I need help, Rose. <laughs> I am happy to help. Um, but yeah, you really can think five years ahead, where you want to be, who you want to be. And it's different than faking it until you make it. Uh, I truly think if you know your personal style and know who you are and start wearing that every day, that's when true confidence comes out because you're being yourself. Mm -hmm. This isn't about really being on trend or, or anybody else's opinion. The most important opinion is the opinion you have of yourself because you have to live with that 100%. person every day. So if you are truly being yourself and showing up, the right people are going to say yes. The right people are going to invite you to these opportunities that are out there and it, it will happen more naturally and with a little more flow when you're being yourself and you're really confident and I don't think you can do it when you're playing dress up as somebody else. I agree. You know what? This has been amazing and I cannot believe this time has flown so quickly. <laughs> um, so, but we definitely are going to have to talk again offline because I need your help. <laughs> Always there for you. <laughs> but we do have three VIP questions that we ask all our guests. So are you ready for those? I am so ready. Okay. This will be, actually, I may change it up for you. We'll, we'll do a, we may do a modification. So if you were chosen to be one of the first colonists on Mars, what three pieces of your wardrobe would be most important <laughs> for you to take with you? Ooh, you got me. <laughs> I was going to be this great family gal that said my husband and my dog. And my um, ooh. So I have these very comfy uh, black, just they're, they're kind of, they look like sneakers, but they're satin and they have these fun little black poof balls on them that are faux fur. I would definitely wear those because I have a feeling there would be some work involved. And but she'd still look classy. Yeah, yeah, you'd still look classy. So some really great fashion sneakers. Um, really uh, some great, co a, a great cozy sweater, but in like a classic mock neck that I feel really good in. I feel like chic in, but it's cozy. I like the chicness and the coziness together. And my favorite pair of jeans. I love it. <laughs> not, it's not super, super fancy, but uh, it would be very comfortable. It, and still a little bit classy with your fashion sneakers, right? You got it. <laughs> Sorry to mix that up on you, but I couldn't help it. <laughs> so what is one thing you do each morning to set your day up for success? Oh, okay. I remember seeing this. Um, you know, I will just be super vulnerable and say, take my medication. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm one of those entrepreneurs that has ADHD, which a lot of us do. And as a lot of ladies go undiagnosed for such a long time, like I did. And it makes all the difference in the world. So I take my medication and take the animals in the house for a walk and everything is right in the world and we get to work. Well, thank you for being vulnerable about that. Well, well yeah, I think a lot of people don't don't share that they struggle with that and a, and a lot of people in the workforce do so yeah I, and i agree a lot of entrepreneurs probably have it even if it hasn't been diagnosed because they're like Doo -doo -doo -doo. 
all the time, you know. <laughs> so, all right. So my final question for you. If your life's work was being summarized in a news article, what would the headline be? Oh, um, I think it would be something about spreading self-care kind of disguised as style mm. and self-love disguised as style. Because really, like I said, I, I really wish that women just saw themselves the way that I can see them. I, I don't think it's any sort of, you know, outer worldly power or anything, but I, I do, I see these people accomplishing these huge goals and even bigger goals than they see for themselves. Um, and I just wish people had the confidence in, the, in themselves that their best friends have in them. And sometimes that that's, that's hard for people to do. So mm -hmm. I wish they could just look in the mirror and see themselves the way I see them. And I think it kind of helps propel them there. So, um, self-care and self-love. I, I love what you just said so much because I tell, you know, even, even my boyfriend, I tell him all the time, I'm like, I wish you could see yourself through my eyes Yeah. to see how amazing you are, you know? And yeah. I tell lots of people that, and we're so hard on ourselves naturally, and we need to stop it. We oh, need yeah. to stop doing that. I'm, I'm never going to cure cancer, but I could give some, I could help somebody discover their confidence so that they go out and write the paper or get the degree or mm -hmm. apply for the grant and they make that big ripple. So I think confidence is, is this thing that is overused and that word is overused, but I think we all have it. It's just underneath all this layer of gook that yeah. we could just clear away if we were just ourselves openly. Oh, Rose, I don't want to say goodbye, but I'm going to have to wrap this up. You know, I really appreciate you sharing all your information with us today and all your tips and tricks. And, you know, I just have one last thing to say to you. You are a VIP. Oh, thank you, Casey. You're a <laughs> VIP. Oh, thanks for having me on. It was, it was really a joy. And that's a wrap for today. Join us next week here on the We Are VIP podcast. We'd love to know how we can help you be a VIP. To find out more, log on to wearevip.com.